Impeachment. It's the constitutional way of saying, by Felicia. It's probably presidential harassment. You may remember that after Trump was impeached back in December, Nancy Pelosi didn't pass the articles on to the Senate. Instead, she chose to hold on to them tight, tighter than Mike Pence's sphincter in a room with two women. <laughs> yeah, temptation often passes through the back door. <laughs> but, but today, after a month of tension, Pelosi finally announced she's handing the articles over to the Senate so that they can hold the trial. And I don't know what was going on with Nancy today, but at her press conference, she seemed a little spaced out. Good morning, everyone. This is a very important day for us. And as you know, I reference temporal markers that our founders and our poets and others have used over time uh, to place us in time, to emphasize the importance of time, because everything is about time. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of timing, it feels like Pelosi's edibles just kicked in at the wrong moment there. <laughs> I think the point Pelosi was trying to make is that she feels that after a month of waiting, now is the right time to pass impeachment to the Senate. But handing over the articles of impeachment isn't as simple as handing over your mom to a nursing home. No, an occasion like this <laughs> calls for a little ceremony. They are going to be marching the articles from the House chamber, through the statuary hall, through the rotunda, along the second floor of the Capitol, past the old Senate chamber, through the Ohio clock corridor, and then eventually to the Senate chamber. Those documents now are, are being taken from the House of Representatives through Statuary Hall. They'll be going into the Capitol rotunda uh, to the Senate to present the articles of impeachment. Mr. President, I have been directed by the House of Representatives to inform the Senate the House has passed HRES 798, a resolution appointing and authorizing managers for the impeachment trial of Donald John Trump, President of the United States. So we're all just gonna pretend nobody invented email? <laughs> and just as an aside, what was up with that graphic? What was that from the news, huh? <laughs> We don't need to see an arrow making love to the Senate chamber to understand how people enter a room. They're walking across the building. It's a straight line. It's a hallway. We get it. So now... So now that the Senate has the articles of impeachment, the big fight is now going to be about whether or not the trial will include new witnesses and new evidence. Because, you see, just yesterday, we learned new details about Trump and his shady dealings with Ukraine. The new evidence collected by congressional investigators comes from Lev Parnas, an associate of Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, 59 pages of records, including text messages, emails, and handwritten notes, including one scrawled on hotel stationery that reads, quote, get Zelensky to announce that the Biden case will be investigated. And there's a letter from Giuliani requesting a meeting with Ukraine's then-president-elect Zelensky, emphasizing Giuliani was working in his capacity as personal counsel to President Trump and with his knowledge and consent. No, seriously? They wrote down the plot of their crime and then kept it? <laughs> that is a literal paper trail. Why would you do that? What, were they just hanging around like, you have to keep the receipts? Like, isn't that taxes? No, no, it's for crimes, too. You have to keep them. <laughs> Only Donald Trump would hire henchmen who are also into scrapbooking. Like, they're like a bunch of criminal Martha Stewarts, you know, also known as Martha Stewarts. <laughs> Trump's impeachment trial is set to begin next week. And as with any impeachment trial, the Senate will serve as the jury. So this afternoon, all the senators were sworn in by Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts. And then they signed their names one by one in what's known as the oath book. Yeah, it was a really solemn moment, and also the first time uh, ever that anyone's ever asked for Ted Cruz's autograph. <laughs> now, the one big question hanging over this trial has been, will Republican senators allow new witnesses to testify? Well, apparently, some of those witnesses aren't waiting to find out. They're just showing up on TV, right? And the conversation everyone's talking about right now is Rachel Maddow's interview with Lev Parnas, an associate of Rudy Giuliani and a man with seven different hairstyles all at once. <laughs> Now, <laughs> Parnas is important 
Because unlike some previous witnesses who only heard about what was going on, he claims that he was working closely with Rudy Giuliani to get dirt on the Bidens. So if those other people smelled the borscht, he actually made it. And now he's telling all of America how it went down. President Trump knew exactly what was going on. Uh, he was aware of all of my movements. Uh, he, I wouldn't do anything without the consent of Rudy Giuliani or the president. Are you saying sp specifically, and I want to sort of drill down on that, that the president was aware that you and Mr. Giuliani were working on this effort in Ukraine to basically try to hurt Joe Biden's political career? He, was, he knew basically. about that. Yeah, well, it was, it was all about Joe Biden, Hunter Biden. It was never about uh, corruption. It was never, it was strictly about uh, the Burisma, which included Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. That's a big deal coming from Rudy Giuliani's right-hand man. This would be like if Luigi went on Rachel Maddow, like, <laughs> Mario doesn't care about the princess. <laughs> he just loves to murder turtles. He wants to kill all of them. He's a very sick man. <laughs> it would be huge. <laughs> now... <laughs> now, the White House... The White House has responded to this interview, saying that Parnas is a liar. They say he's only saying this because he's been indicted for campaign finance fraud, and so now he's trying to get a lighter sentence, like a Ukrainian Takashi 6 9 And Trump <laughs> has gone one step further, saying that he doesn't even know what a Lev Parnas is, much less that he gave him instructions to get dirt on Joe Biden. To which Parnas is now responding, picks. It did happen. The President of the United States said, uh, he didn't know you. I don't know those gentlemen. Now, it's possible I have a picture with him because I have a picture with everybody. I don't know them. I welcome him to say that even more. Every time he says that, I'll show him another picture. He's lying. He's lying. I hope when Parnas does release the pictures, they just get steadily more incriminating, you know? It would be funny if, like, at first, they just had a party together. You know, then the next picture, they're riding together on Space Mountain. <laughs> then eventually, like, all pictures will just end up with nudes. <laughs> you know, that's where it's gonna go. <laughs> Yeah, and Trump will be like, that doesn't mean anything. I take nudes with everyone. <laughs> so many nudes. <laughs> so, the third presidential impeachment trial in American history began today. And because impeachment is such a momentous occasion, the Senate had to kick things off with a formal proclamation. The U.S. Senate is about to take on an historic and perhaps grueling task, the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons are commanded to keep silent on pain of imprisonment. While the Senate of the United States is sitting for the trial of the articles of impeachment exhibited by the House of Representatives against Donald John Trump, President of the United States. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, is one of those phrases that has to be shouted. Certain phrases have to be shouted, like, make some noise, or you're not even my real dad. <laughs> Gotta shout certain things. And despite the ASMR intro, Trump's impeachment trial <laughs> is already filled with drama. Just look at the all-star defense team President Trump put together. All right, this is an insane team that Trump collected. It's got Ken Starr, the lawyer who is famous for doing the investigation that led to Bill Clinton's impeachment. And it's got Alan Dershowitz, who's famous for defending O.J. Simpson. So these lawyers are perfect for Trump because they have experience with super guilty people and super horny presidents. It's great. It's a good combination. <laughs> but I will say this. Trump's lawyers may want to polish up their defense strategy because things have already gotten off to a rocky start. The president's legal team offering the first glimpse of their defense, that the president did nothing wrong, did not commit a crime, and that even the Democrats' argument of abuse of power does not rise to an impeachable offense, something one of his lawyers, Alan Dershowitz, maintained over the weekend. The articles of impeachment are two non-criminal uh, actions. But many constitutional scholars disagree. Trump's lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, himself once argued the opposite during the Clinton impeachment. So it certainly doesn't have to be a crime if you have somebody who completely corrupts the office of president. This is really interesting. What he said in the 90s was, in fact, correct. And what he's saying now is also, in fact, correct. Previously, you said it doesn't have to be a crime if the, guy, if the, if the person in office completely corrupts the office of president. Now you're saying criminal-like. So you're not... So corrupting the office of the president 
Is that in your criminal light or criminal like? No, uh, no, it's not. So and it's that, not. Was so, so, that was rejected. That okay. was rejected by the. So you were wrong. Look, ba- you're saying you were I, wrong back then. I was saying that I'm much more correct right now, having done much all the more research. Because that's that the issue. I didn't do the research back then okay. because that wasn't an issue. So I've done the research okay. now. I, I wasn't wrong. I am just far more correct now than I was then. <laughs> Wait, what? I wasn't wrong. I am just far more correct now than I was then. That is one of the most original lines I have ever heard in my life. And that's a great line for a lawyer, but thank God this guy doesn't work on a bomb squad. Because that would be a disaster. He would just be like, cut the yellow wire. Wait, cut the red one. I already cut the yellow one. Yeah, well, I wasn't wrong about yellow, but the red one is more correct. (laughs) Don't worry, we're not gonna die. We're just gonna be less alive. If Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has his way, the vote to convict or acquit President Trump will come sooner rather than later. McConnell presenting his proposed trial rules that break from the Clinton model. Mitch McConnell releasing his long-awaited blueprint. Each side will have 24 hours over just two days to make their opening statements. It means senators could have to sit for 12-hour sessions, part of the Republican push for a faster trial. But Democrats say Republicans are trying to hide the president's misconduct in the dead of night. He could force presentations to take place at 2 or 3 in the morning. The McConnell resolution will result in a rush trial with little evidence in the dark of night. Literally, the dark of night. You know, for a guy who shares so much DNA with turtles, McConnell sure wants to move fast. You know what I feel like? I feel like McConnell will be the worst person to go on a date with, you know? Because he seems like one of those people who would order the appetizer, the main course, and the dessert all at the same time, you know, just to rush things along. Just be like, yeah, bring us the soup, the steak, the hot fudge sundae, and the check. We're getting the check. It's all formality. We're just gonna smash. (laughs) Today was the day that Democrats began to lay out their case against the president. But last night, fights were already breaking out about whether this trial should even be happening in the first place. Opening arguments begin early this afternoon and we're expecting a very fierce debate over why the president should and shouldn't be removed from office. Republicans want this all over by the State of the Union address in two weeks. Democrats say not so fast. Why are we here? Are we here because of a phone call? We are here, sir, to follow the facts, apply the law, be guided by the Constitution, and present the truth to the American people. That is why we are here, Mr. Seculo. And if you don't know, now you know. Oh! And if you don't know, now you know. That's right, that's right, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries just quoted Biggie <laughs> on the floor of Congress. The only thing, the only thing I wish is that he'd use the entire line. That would have been amazing. He was like, if you don't know, now you know, nigga. (laughs) Because if that happened, black people would have been out celebrating in the streets. It would have been MLK Day Part Two. All of us out there like, you know very well who you are. But I gotta say, man, hip hop has come a long way. Think about it. In the 80s and 90s, it was considered gangster music and now it's being quoted in an impeachment trial. Huh? That's how far hip hop has come. Think about that. That's insane. (laughs) Hip hop just keeps going. I bet it's only a matter of time before like Mitch McConnell responds with a rap lyric of his own. He's like, ma, my name is Mitch and I don't have a jaw. I love the Senate and saying, (laughs) ma. Now, now the reason things got so heated yesterday is because Democrats tried 10 different times to get new witnesses and evidence into this impeachment trial. And the Republicans shot them down each and every time. There hasn't been that much rejection in D.C. since Stephen Miller went speed dating. (laughs) Now, one of the main witnesses Democrats really hope will testify is former Trump advisor and grumpy Captain Crunch, John Bolton. (laughs) But when the president was asked about it this morning, he had a list of reasons why he doesn't want Bolton to testify. In regards to the proceedings going on in the Senate, are you absolutely against John Bolton testifying? The problem with John is that it's a national security problem. You know, you can't have somebody who's at national security 
And uh, if you think about it, John, he knows some of my thoughts. He knows what I think about leaders. Uh, what happens if he reveals what I think about a certain leader, and it's not very positive, and that I have to deal on behalf of the country? It's going to be very hard. It's going to make the job very hard. Uh, he knows other things. And uh, I don't know if we left on the best of the terms. I would say probably not. You know, you know, one thing I enjoy about Trump is that he will give you every excuse all at the same time, <laughs> right? He'll start with the fake excuse, but then he'll just keep going until you learn the real reasons. Just like, sadly, we can't hear from Bolton because it's a national security threat. And also, he'll reveal what I think about other world leaders. And also, he hates my guts. And also, he'll implicate me in the crimes that I committed. <laughs> so many reasons. Breaking overnight, bombshell. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton ready to turn on the president as news leaks from his explosive new book about what he claims really happened with Ukraine. Bolton says the president told him that he wanted to continue freezing $391 million in security assistance to Ukraine until officials there helped with investigations into Democrats, including the Bidens. President Trump signaling that he is going to paint John Bolton as a disgruntled former employee. Take a look at his tweet from earlier today. He says, if John Bolton said this, it was only to sell a book. Wow. This is a big deal, because we now know that if Bolton testifies, he would say that Trump personally told him that he wanted to hold up aid to Ukraine until he got dirt on the Bidens, which is the whole thing. This is the heart of the entire impeachment thing. So I don't know how Senate Republicans can justify not hearing from Bolton now. Like, like there's no reason. Imagine an eyewitness to a murder wanted to testify and the judge just refused. You know, just like, Your Honor, I, I, I saw this man and I saw the crime firsthand. It'd be like, up, 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 no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> I want to see how it ends. <laughs> and by the way, is Trump, is Trump really going to argue that John Bolton is just another disgruntled employee? Because I don't know about you, but he, he sure seems to have a lot of disgruntled <laughs> employees. Like, how come nobody ever leaves the White House gruntled? <laughs> He's like, thank you, Mr. President. I am so gruntled to have worked with you. <laughs> so Bolton's book has thrown a big, hairy curveball into this impeachment trial. <laughs> but believe it or not, the Bolton revelations aren't the only big new piece of evidence. Because remember Lev Parnas? Yes? Rudy Giuliani's right-hand man and the Count from Sesame Street? <laughs> well, after Parnas said that he worked for Trump to get dirt on Joe Biden, Trump repeatedly claimed he has no idea who this man is. And that's even though they've, been, they've appeared in more photos together than Mariah Carey and Christmas trees. <laughs> so now the question is, is Trump lying about not knowing Parnas, or is Parnas lying about knowing Trump? Well, it turns out Parnas has the receipts. Breaking overnight, the release of an explosive new audio tape that reportedly features President Trump speaking to Igor Fruman and Lev Parnas at a dinner in 2018. On the tape, a voice identified as Parnas can be heard telling Trump that the ambassador to Ukraine was bad-mouthing him. Yeah, and she's basically walking around telling everybody, wait, he's gonna get impeached, uh, <laughs> just wait. I mean, really? it's, uh, <laughs> it's incredible. It's get rid of her. Get her out tomorrow. Okay, get her out tomorrow. <laughs> Take her out, okay? Excellent. Do it. President Trump has repeatedly said he doesn't know Lev Parnas. But on the tape, they talk in detail about Ukraine. White House Press Secretary Stephanie Grisham said the gathering doesn't mean the president knew of or even remembered Lev Parnas. Uh, the president sits at many, many dinners, at many, many roundtables with people that he does not know. Yeah. <laughs> the president has many, many dinners, sometimes all on the same night. <laughs> Come on, guys, I'm sorry. You, you, you just can't keep pretending that Trump doesn't know this guy, right? Because first, they said Trump wouldn't remember all the people he takes photos with. Okay, I understand that. Now they're saying Trump can't remember all the people he has private dinners with? <laughs> what, what's next? They're gonna be like, look, the president gets matching quid pro quo back tattoos with a lot of people. <laughs> he can't be expected to remember all of them. This afternoon, in a stunning argument, one of President Trump's top lawyers claimed any president has almost unlimited power, that his election is in the public interest, and so he said Trump cannot be impeached. Every public official that I know believes that his election is in the public interest. And if a president 
does something which he believes will help him get elected in the public interest, that cannot be the kind of quid pro quo that results in impeachment. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally arrived. First it was, there was no quid pro quo. Then it was, maybe there was a quid pro quo, but it was to help the country, not Donald Trump. And now it's like, hey man, the Donald gonna do what the Donald gonna do. You little bitch asses need to shut the hell up. <laughs> so just to be clear, the Trump team's argument is now that anything Trump does to get himself reelected is fine because his reelection in his mind is good for the country and then it's not impeachable, anything. Yeah, so Trump can collude, Trump can obstruct, and it's all good. Hell, he can even lock all the Democratic candidates in a room with Eric. Yeah, just be like, <laughs> at some point, one of you will eat the other, and either way, I win. <laughs> there is no denying that this weekend was a big one for President Trump. And not just because the chef at Mar-a-Lago made boob-shaped burgers, no. <laughs> it was big because Republican senators stopped witnesses from testifying at Trump's impeachment trial. And it wasn't for the reason that you might think. This weekend, more Senate Republicans admitted the president's actions were wrong and bad, but they insist not impeachable. I agreed he did something inappropriate, but I don't agree he did anything akin to treason, bribery, high crimes, and misdemeanor. Well, I mean, if you have eight witnesses who say someone left the scene of an accident, why do you need nine? I mean, it's, the question for me was, do I need more evidence to conclude that the president did what he did? And I concluded, no. After months of claiming Trump did nothing wrong, many key Republicans have now settled on, look, man, it was bad, but not kick the guy out bad. Yeah, Republicans basically treat Trump like white people treat their dogs, you know? Sure, it tore up all the furniture, pooped on the floor, and bit the neighbor's kid, but who can stay mad at that face? <laughs> who can stay mad at that face? He just wanted a quid pro quo. He wants a quid pro quo. <laughs> who wants a quid pro quo? <laughs> you want a quid pro quo. Today was the final day in the impeachment trial of Donald Jambalaya Trump. <laughs> and no big surprise, he was acquitted by the Republican-run Senate, which boo! was never in doubt. Yeah, yeah, uh, don't boo, vote. <laughs> See, impeachment <laughs> was, it was known. Like, everyone knew where this was going. This, this was like a movie where you can guess what was gonna happen without even watching it. You know, like Titanic. Okay, it's a ship that's gonna sink. Or Sophie's Choice, some lady has to decide which dude she's gonna bone. I get it, I get it. <laughs> so with the outcome, never in doubt, the only real drama today was whether any Republicans would dare vote against Donald Trump. And it turns out there was one man with binders full of courage. Republican Senator Mitt Romney emotionally announced on the Senate floor that he will break ranks and vote to convict and remove President Trump. The president asked a foreign government to investigate his political rival. The president's purpose was personal and political. Accordingly, the president is guilty of an appalling abuse of public trust. With my vote, I will tell my children and their children that I did my duty to the best of my ability, believing that my country expected it of me. That is shocking. <laughs> well, that is shocking. Who would have thought? that the most badass Republican in the Senate would end up being a Mormon dude named Mitt. <laughs> and I gotta say, Mitt, you proved everyone wrong. The haters said you were as radical as a glass of skim milk, but they were wrong, Mitt. <laughs> You're whole milk, my man. <laughs> That's right, whole milk, fam. <laughs> now, other than Romney, another Republican senator who was considered on the fence was also uh, about Trump was Susan Collins of Maine, all right? But she decided that we don't need to throw Trump out because she thinks he's already been scared straight. There are some senators who could have crossed party lines. Senator Susan Collins will not be one of them. I'm voting to acquit. I believe that the president has learned from this case. What do you believe the president has learned? The president has been impeached. That's a pretty big lesson. Yeah. However, during a TV anchor's lunch at the White House yesterday, Trump responded to questions about Collins' comments, saying he had done nothing wrong, and that his conversation with Ukraine's president, quote, was a perfect call. 
Man, Donald Trump would be the hardest person to defend in courts. <laughs> He'd be like, Your Honor, my client has learned his lesson. No, I haven't. <laughs> his days of selling drugs are over. Who wants cocaine? <laughs> Because clearly Trump hasn't learned a lesson. Right, if anything, he's learned that he can do whatever he wants and Republicans will let him get away with it. But first, they're gonna shake their heads. Mm. <laughs> so basically, thanks to Senate Republicans, Trump is now free. He can just run through laws like he's got that Super Mario invisibility star. That's what he can do. <laughs> yeah, he's invincible. Except Trump is more powerful than Mario because in this case, the turtles are on his side. Basically, <laughs> basically, President Trump is off the hook. He's completely off the hook. And you know what that means? He's gonna let loose tonight, man. He's gonna eat 50 burgers, bang a porn star, <laughs> and then he's gonna do something crazy. <laughs>